couldn't quite grab that, but Wiggins didn't give up on the play. Here's Wiseman on the handle. Push ahead to Oubre. Wants it back. Yes, sir! The hammer! James Wiseman has been one of the most impressive rookies in the 2020 NBA Draft, averaging 11 points and 6 rebounds in just 20 minutes of playing time. He's easily a 20-point double-double threat getting starters minutes on the floor on a nightly basis. Despite this fact, the Warriors have only allowed the rookie bench minutes and, as of recently, between 15 and 20 minutes per night. Couple this with the fact that Bob Myers was quoted recently as saying that this year is an intermission year for the Warriors, you would think that Wiseman, as our future centerpiece, would be able to play as many minutes as he can handle, barring any egregious mistakes. Conceivably, he should also be getting any available minutes at the end of games whenever possible. This hasn't been the case however, and much of it doesn't seem to be making sense. Why isn't this star rookie allowed to dominate and get between 25 and 30 minutes a night? I'm going to try and answer these questions in this video, so let's get to it. Hey, what's happening everyone? This is Swish. And in this video, I wanted to talk about why James Wiseman, a potential Rookie of the Year candidate, is not getting as much playing time as some of the other top rookies. In his last four games, Wiseman has been averaging just 16.8 minutes, and this has significantly limited his impact on the team and his potential for clinching the Rookie of the Year title. James currently has a player impact rating of 14.75, which is good for third in my tracking. With that being said, he is well behind the likes of Tyrese Halliburton, who himself is well behind LaMelo Ball. The fact that James is in third at this juncture, with the number of minutes he has been playing, makes a great case for him to be much closer to the current top two rookies this year. Let's have a quick look at the two rookies above Wiseman and see what the major differences are with respect to their performance, player impact rating, and overall minutes played. Currently ranking second this year, of all the rookies that were drafted in the 2020 NBA Draft, Tyrese Halliburton of the Sacramento Kings has been playing incredibly for the Northern California team. The Kings had a major steal in this draft, picking up Halliburton just outside of the top 10 lottery with the 11th pick and have been reaping the benefits ever since. Halliburton is averaging 12.1 points, 5.3 assists, and 2.7 rebounds in just under 29 minutes on the floor for the Kings with a player impact rating of 17.69 and a player efficiency rating of 19.72. He's also shooting 52% from the field and a remarkable 50% from three. This is likely to adjust downwards as the season progresses, but impressive nonetheless. Coming into the league, a perceived weakness in Halliburton's game was his shooting mechanics. However, all doubts have been dispelled as his consistency hasn't wavered and his impact on the court is that of a true starter in this league. The next player, LaMelo Ball, whom was picked third by the Charlotte Hornets, has given his team a significant boost on both ends of the floor, shutting down point guards and the likes such as Luka Doncic and Trey Young in matchups, as well as facilitating a lightning quick offense throwing full court passes, lobs and no look dimes to athletic and long teammates, as well as former star for the Boston Celtics, Gordon Hayward. A peculiar thing to note is that this team currently has two players on the former Boston Celtics team that managed to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals in the aforementioned Hayward and Terry Rozier. This Hornets team is a lot tougher than many opponents think and should easily make the playoffs this year. LaMelo has been leading this team in rebounds and assists in the last three games, with current career averages of 12.6 points, 7 rebounds, and 6 assists in 25 minutes of playing time. For the sleuths that are watching, ESPN currently has LaMelo listed incorrectly at 12.4 points, with a miscount in his points in the Hornets win versus Atlanta on January 6th. LaMelo also boasts a player impact rating of 22.53 and a player efficiency rating of 19.58. These stats put him immediately in the top tier of starters. The most impressive feat is that he's doing this while coming off the Hornets bench behind Terry Rozier. Wiseman, on the other hand, didn't have the same preseason as Halliburton and Ball, 
and therefore had much less time to adapt. With it being so early in the season, it is understandable that his performance won't be able to match those other players, especially considering that Lamelo has pro experience, having played in the NBL last year, and Halliburton having played a full two years in college. It is easy to see what sets these two apart from the rest of the field. With this in mind, the development team and staff at the Warriors facility have been working with Wiseman to get him up to pro speed. Don't forget, Wiseman is essentially coming straight from high school, having played only three games against weak competition in college. Wiseman has been working in particular with coach Theo Robertson to help fast track Wiseman's transition. There are moments on the floor that they look for specifically to use as teaching moments for Wiseman to help him develop. Associate head coach Mike Brown as well has come out and said that they want to win, so this limits Wiseman's time on the floor. Sometimes, however, it does seem like taking Wiseman off the floor contradicts this philosophy as he's been helpful in areas. The reason for that is that the team already has their schedule for guys on the floor. Essentially, they have a set time for when they will take guys out before the games even start. This set rotation allows everyone to be somewhat participatory based on how they have been performing and includes contingencies for injuries as well. There are adjustments made during the game obviously, if for example a player is doing very well in helping the team and we're losing, the player can still get substituted but will likely go back in shortly after to replace another player. This way it keeps the rotation going according to plan as well as adjusting for players on the floor that are performing above expectations. This means that even if Wiseman is performing well, unless he's blowing guys out of the water and playing perfectly, they will take him off the floor so he can work with coaches about what he's been doing on the floor in the last 6 or 7 minutes. This is somewhat similar to the ramp up for Zion last year as he got acclimated to the New Orleans team. Former Warriors assistant coach Alvin Gentry gave him 6 minute bursts of playing time not only to help with conditioning but to allow Zion to get up to NBA speed. Consider that Zion had played 33 games at the college level, making it all the way to the Elite 8 in the NCAA tournament. It is understandable that Wiseman has a lot of development and a lot of potential to go with. Though we have seen flashes of what he's capable of doing, we haven't seen anywhere near what he's capable of as far as an overall performance. Wiseman did not close in the fourth quarter in games versus the Clippers and the Raptors as those were close games against tough teams where the coaching staff felt it was better for him to have those learning moments off the floor. In a typical scenario, Wiseman would have gotten drafted to a team that didn't have much of a choice with regards to putting him on the floor. With the limited court time he has had in the last year and a half, the fact that he's on a very good team that wants to win and that he had zero ramp up to the NBA games, all these factors make this situation very delicate. However, it can be frustrating to some extent for Wiseman. Rest assured though, as he grows and improves, every day he gets this experience that will help him become a better asset for the Warriors and should be a fairly decent option for us come playoffs. I expect him to become a very dependable asset and the number one option for us at that position by the time we get there as he gets into rhythm and develops more chemistry with our starting lineup. So just to recap, Steve Kerr feels that in certain situations it's better for wise men to learn on the bench and in others his performance might be good but doesn't warrant an adjustment to the floor at this time. This is something the coaching staff look at as a whole in order to make these decisions. What we see is just the end result, however this doesn't mean that his overall development will be stunted. He should be able to come along well in time. And that's it for now, thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel for more content. Let me know if there are any topics you guys want to talk about and I'll see if I can work those in as well. Till next time. I block so hard, sweetie, get served. Call me Lonzo Ball, bitches get swerved. Usually, I don't get down with these girls, but tonight it's on my mind. So I might eat these words. I just wanna.